Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1048. Object class, Keter, formerly SAFE. Formerly Special safe. containment procedures. The following sentence was stricken from the official document. SCP-1048 is currently free to roam Site-24, as it poses no threat and has been observed to greatly improve the morale of personnel that interact with it. The whereabouts of SCP-1048 are currently unknown, though it is still believed to be somewhere in Site-24. Subject is to be secured for containment, but any creation of SCP-1048s should be destroyed on site, unless further evidence warrants less extreme actions. No teddy bears are allowed into Site-24 to prevent any confusion or mistaken identity. Any object that resembles a teddy bear is to be reported to the security team immediately. This is not a joke. We have no idea what SCP-1048's full capabilities are. Who knows how many of the damn things are out by now? Ooh, this Dr. is... Dr. Carver. Turning interesting. Description. Like SCP-1048 is a small teddy bear approximately 33 centimeters in height. Through testing, composition of the subject revealed no unusual qualities that make it discernible from a non-sapient teddy bear. Subject is capable of moving of its own accord and can communicate through a small range of gestures. The subject regularly shows affection to individuals in ways found endearing by most people. Affection is usually given in the form of a hug to the lower leg, but Subject has also been observed dancing, jumping in place, and in two separate events, has even drawn childlike pictures for janitorial staff. Oh, that's kind of cute. It's like a cutesy little fucking SCP then, hey? Eh? Actual Build-A-Bear. All Foundation personnel that have interacted with the subject have responded positively to its affection, even D-Class with normally sociopathic tendencies. Attempts at direct communication with SCP-1048 have not been considered successful. Though it is capable of simple gestures to indicate a yes or no answer, it will often not react to lines of questioning concerning its nature or where it originated from. It is not known if this is because SCP-1048 simply does not know the answers or because it does not want to answer. Though capable of drawing pictures, it has not used its art as a form of communication beyond showing affection, even when encouraged to do so. The more anomalous behavior of SCP-1048 okay. was not observed until approximately seven months after it was originally secured. It is hypothesized that the subject is able to construct crude replicas of itself using various materials, by a process that is yet to be observed directly by Foundation staff. Dr. Carver has suggested that SCP-1048 uses its endearing qualities to lull those around it into a false sense of security, oh. allowing it to collect materials to produce these creations. So it makes like crude versions of itself. Well, that's kind of cool. Like, and I'm guessing that those are kind of dangerous then? I'm assuming it would seem logical. Oh, also, I, I'm a little bit sick. I have a fever going on, so... Sorry if uh, my energy levels are not that high, I do apologize, but I thought today we would do a little bit of a reaction at least. Currently, there are three known creations of SCP-1048. Oh, here we go. Designated right SCP-1048-A, B, and C. The nature of these creations has been in stark contrast to SCP-1048's general behavior, as all have exhibited extreme violence towards humans. SCP-1048-A. SCP-1048-A was discovered wandering Site-24, accompanied by SCP-1048. Subject resembles a teddy bear similar in size and shape to SCP-1048, but is made entirely out of human ears. Witnesses interviewed reported that it appeared SCP-1048 was giving a tour of Site-24 to SCP-1048-A. Dr. Carver was called to the scene, along with the security team. The security team arrived first and attempted to contain SCP-1048-A. Subject emitted a high-pitched shriek that inflicted intense pain in the eyes and ears of everyone within a 10-meter radius. 
ear-like growths immediately began growing on those within 5 meters of the subject, covering their bodies in less than 20 seconds. Ear like wait, so it screams and everybody gets like ears? Like a like it's like a some type of fungus? Really? That's a bit weird, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie. Every person afflicted with this symptom died within three minutes, resulting in death of personnel, including the entire security team. Autopsies revealed the cause of death to be asphyxiation caused by an abundance of ear-like growths manifesting in the mouths and trachea of all victims. SCP-1048 and SCP-1048-A fled the scene before Dr. Carver arrived, and have not been contained since the incident, though sightings of both have been reported on multiple occasions. Oh, so they just, they just keep going. Shortly after this incident occurred, oh. a researcher was discovered missing an ear. According to him, it was removed through unknown means while he was sleeping. No other victims of ear removal were found, so it is unclear if SCP-1048 obtained more ears from another source, or it is capable of duplicating objects or materials. Well, if it's only one instance of a dude missing an ear, maybe maybe it's I'm leaning more towards probably duplication than right. But they but they're uncontained, so they just keep going on. Who knows how many more Bilderberries there are now? Then it could be hundreds more, right? SCP-1048-B Subject was discovered by several Foundation staff members in the cafeteria of Site-24 on Subject's appearance was nearly identical to SCP-1048, but it moved in an irregular, jerky manner. Witnesses reported that it appeared as if something was moving inside of SCP-1048-B. Subject made no attempt to interact initially, until a burst in its seams revealed what appeared to be the hand and arm of a human infant poking out and grasping the air. What? At the sight of this, a female researcher named screamed, and SCP-1048-B reacted by emitting a high-pitched cry similar to that of a human infant. The subject then attempted to the screaming researcher, causing massive internal damage. In the ensuing chaos, Another, like, a security team was forced to both the researcher and SCP-1048-B. Approximately three hours after this incident, Dr. was found unconscious and bleeding in her office. An abortion had been performed on her while she was sleeping, oh. and the eight-month-old fetus was never found. Oh! Oh, sorry. Dude, oh my god. This fucking build bear went and did an abort- No, I cannot. But again, the build bear is using a, a human element, if you will. Although this is a fetus, not an air. Very, very different. It seems like it's using it purposefully for like a weapon kind of deal. It's not like a... You know what I mean? Like it, it weaponized the air and it weaponized the fetus. I mean, that is pretty impressive though, to weaponize air and fetus. Uh, that's... I don't think... That, that is pretty impressive to weaponize those, but maybe, maybe there's a pattern there then. Maybe, that, maybe that's the pattern. It is hypothesized that SCP-1048 used Dr. King's unborn child to create SCP-1048-B. Information so regarding the possible origin of SCP-1048-B is not to be leaked to the survivors currently undergoing therapy for the incident with SCP-1048-B. As Dr. Alive? Carver believes, it would be extremely detrimental to the recovery. SCP-1048-C Subject resembles a teddy bear, similar to SCP-1048, but composed entirely of rusted metal scraps. Subject was first sighted up by Dr. Carver in his office while writing up a report on the SCP-1048-B incident. Subject fled the room when it noticed Dr. Carver observing it. In the attempted pursuit of SCP-1048-C, Dr. Carver witnessed the death and maiming of Foundation personnel as the subject exhibited extreme violence during its escape. SCP-1048-C has not been encountered since this initial sighting, well, and it is unknown anymore. whether it still resides somewhere within Site-24. The origins of any materials possibly used to construct SCP-1048-C by SCP-1048 are also unknown at this time. But they didn't say anything about C, whether it was a, um, like what, how it did the damage. You said it did the damage, I wonder. And it's also peculiar, does he use some type of human 
uh, material as well or not. Addendum 1048-1 SCP-2295 is similar but nearly antithetical in function to SCP-1048. Attempts to establish a common origin are ongoing. Extreme caution is to be taken if SCP-1048-A or SCP-1048-C are encountered again. I cannot stress this enough. The damn thing jumped right through those poor people. Dr. Carver. Oh, so maybe that's what it did. Well, that's not creepy. <laughs> okay, that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, and you are all dismissed. Now, there was one thing that really caught my eye, SCP-2295. Let's have a little check of what that is. Because it said it was antithetical to 2295. Um, uh, in fact, I believe they used Dash 1 as a name for 2295 as well. Which is fascinating. SCP-2295 uh, is also a teddy bear. Mostly, it remains uh, completely passive. However, when um, a human uh, who has suffered major trauma, to, let's say an organ, uh, is around SCP-2295, uh, uh, it will then proceed to fix him up, so to speak, try to try to help him, and is able to, in some manner, um, replace the subject's damaged organs. And we're not really, and they don't really know what that, how it's doing this. Uh, it seems to be some type of procedure. And he, it also seems like uh, the way he does it is using some type of materials from the s surrounding areas or himself um, to patch him up, which I guess is why he has the name Patchwork. Um, pretty good SCP overall. I think I like technological SCPs. I don't know why exactly. I just find them very fascinating. Now. Honestly, this is pretty awesome. I like this a lot. And I think we'll go and watch 2295 next. It seems like a good um, follow-up from this one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I apologize for being sick. I have a fever running and I'm uh, fucking exhausted. <laughs> Life happens, I suppose. I'm going a little bit back to the way we used to do uh, the SAP reaction back in the day. I just find it simpler, easier and more fun to do. So I'm probably going to do that for the time being. Um, other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Alright, peace!